Tonight, we're going to talk about food. You know, that stuff you cram into your face hole to squeeze down the dread of daily existence. It's no secret that Americans have a hard time putting healthy food in our bodies. That's why we're constantly reminding kids how to properly nourish themselves. That's why you ought to eat me. This is a story about the pig, the pyramid, and the rock. Don't forget your bread and cereal. Rock strong bones, a real nice smile. Gotta make calcium part of your style. Yeah, I get the feeling those girls don't have much luck getting a strong bone. Getting nutritious food into your kids is tough for all kinds of reasons. Fortunately, we have help doing that. For 75 years, the U.S. has had a school lunch program in place to help children get a free or reduced priced meal. In response to the pandemic, the USDA waived all eligibility requirements and allowed all kids to eat for free. But at the end of this school year, free meals for all will end. The USDA says around 10 million children, thousands right here in southwest Florida, may lose access to free lunches. But many say this is not the time to shut the door on this program. <laughs> oh, looks like someone graduated from the Law & Order School of Journalism. But TV is a visual medium, and it was either that or animate Uncle Sam beating up kids for their lunch money. The National School Lunch Program became especially important during COVID, but it had already been helping families for generations. In 1946, the National School Lunch Act was signed by Harry Truman, a man who cared so much about kids, he even named an atomic bomb after one. The program was established to serve students without discriminating based on ability to pay. It only allowed discrimination based on race. So, half credit there. Just before the pandemic began, the program annually served 4.9 billion lunches in nearly 100,000 schools. But feeding nearly 30 million kids a day has its challenges. In 2019, a typical lunch costs 49 cents more than the average federal subsidy. Additionally, when some families can't pay or haven't completed the paperwork to get free or reduced price lunch, the school district has to pay the difference, often with money intended for educational activities and materials. That's why schools do so much macaroni art. It's the only thing that counts as an activity, material, and food. To protect their tight budgets, many districts go after kids who are in lunch debt. That's right, kids who aren't old enough to sneak into Morbius or out of Morbius already have the burden of debt. Schools' efforts to recover those debts have led to lunch shaming. Students owing more than $10 get a tuna sandwich, more than $20, no lunch at all. There are schools that do practices around, you know, stamping or stickering, saying I owe school lunch money. Students who owe money may be barred from extra activities like prom. They'll take the lunch away and throw it in the trash. The lunch lady took my, took my cheesy breadsticks um, um, and went to the fridge and took out bread on cheese and put it on my lunch tray. Oh my God, the little boy, that voice, his bow tie. Can this story possibly get any more heartbreaking? It was my birthday. Oh my God, of course it can. And this kind of treatment has happened everywhere. The latest now in the Pennsylvania school district that threatened to place children in foster care if their parents didn't pay their lunch debt. That is appalling. George Stephanopoulos is still on TV? Also, the foster care thing is pretty bad. Of course, there are people trying to make things better. Sisters Haley and Hannah Hager are hard at work selling homemade lemonade this summer, raising money to pay off $40,000 in student lunch debt. Third grader Ryan Coyote, who used his own allowance savings to help pay his classmates' debt. Many parents at this Vista California school were behind on lunch payments. So Kiki Hardy, a soft-spoken kindergartner, decided to take action. Her solution? Open a cocoa and cookie stand. Stop treating these like uplifting stories, the media. If a kid asks some neighborhood creep to stop boiling puppies, your big story shouldn't be about the kid. If you haven't had a school lunch in a few decades, you may be surprised to find much of the food has gotten better. That's largely thanks to the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act, or THFCA, as no one calls it. That's the law that was spearheaded by Michelle Obama. Since then, studies say kids, especially from low-income households, have been eating healthier school lunches with better overall nutritional quality. Except on Fudge Fridays. Teachers just look the other way and pretend it's black bean soup. But schools still struggle to comply with the act due to the increased costs of meeting updated nutrition standards. Healthy food, 
doesn't just grow on trees, people, and neither does money. While there are some bad school lunches out there, that's largely because of limited budgets. Cost and what the federal school lunch program will reimburse New London is an issue. It's around $3.50 a meal, which doesn't sound so bad, but... That's actually for maintenance, that's for paying people to make the food. So when, when it's all said and done, you have about a dollar and a quarter for food. That is the saddest math problem, since if Timmy has three oranges and you give him two more, how does that change the fact that his parents are dead? One way to improve food quality is cooking from scratch, which can also cost less per serving than buying prepackaged food. But scratch cooking isn't possible for many schools that have outdated or ineffective equipment or lack the necessary space and trained staff, so they can't do much more than open cans and heat up microwavable food, which is okay when your kids are visiting their loser dad every other weekend, but not ideal for five lunches every week. The school lunch system has other flaws. Schools that are less affluent or predominantly serve people of color are less likely to have the resources to offer fresh fruit or salad. And even if kids have good food, they may not have the proper time to eat it thanks to lunch periods that can be less than 20 minutes long or start as early as 9 a.m. Although, on the bright side, that brunch comes with a Bloody Mary. These time constraints on children's meals can lead to behavioral problems, and it's especially concerning given that schools are the healthiest place Americans are eating. They often provide more nutritious food than restaurants, but they are way harder to get into. I called every day for a dinner reservation at my kid's school, and now neither of us is allowed to eat there. Over the past two years, COVID has led us into an experiment with universal free lunch, and it's been a success. It's largely eliminated the problems of lunch debt, lunch shaming, enrollment paperwork, and perhaps most important, parents having to pack lunch every goddamn day. Most days, I barely have time to throw some gum and a P.F. Chang's coupon into a brown paper bag. Many children get half of their daily calories at school, and kids from food insecure households get an even larger proportion of food and nutrients there. So while it's easy to make fun of school lunches, they are hugely important. But as a policy issue, they go neglected because we take them for granted. People just don't feel passionately about them. I mean, at least most people don't. Y'all have made me the number one rated school nutrition speaker in the nation. Lunch ladies and food dudes, yay! They serve your children fruits, vegetables, whole grain, protein, and milk in the exact right proportions every single day to reduce childhood obesity. They are raising your test scores. They are lowering your behavior problems. What do we serve? Fruits, vegetables, whole grain, protein, and milk. Notice where I put whole grain. <laughs> That is my best case scenario for growing older. But she's totally right. And even if feeding kids didn't raise test scores and reduce behavioral problems, it would still just be the right thing to do. That's why most industrialized countries provide free lunch to all students. No one would think to charge students for desks or bathrooms, but when it comes to food, the U.S. suddenly turns into spirit airlines. The universal school lunch extension is set to expire in June. 74% of likely voters support making it permanent, including 63% of Republicans. And while there's an effort in the Senate to extend the program, only two Republican senators are supporting it, with Mitch McConnell reportedly blocking an earlier extension because the GOP's devotion to protecting kids doesn't extend to feeding them or keeping them the hell away from Matt Gates. Two states have passed laws to provide universal free school lunch, but we need nationwide coverage for all kids. We've proved we can make it work. Now it's up to Congress to stand up and do the right thing. And if their backbones aren't feeling strong enough, maybe their diets just need a little more... Calcium is number one for your teeth and your skeleton. Gotta eat calcium, gotta get enough, cause it's the stuff that keeps folks tough.